My daughter-in-law demanded my dead husband's wedding ring, then called me selfish when I said no. Now my family is turning against me. I'm a widow in my 60s. My husband passed away 10 years ago, and I've kept his wedding ring in a little box with some of his things. It's nothing fancy, just a plain gold band. But it's one of the few things I still have that feels like him. Sometimes when I miss him, I take it out and hold it. It's been a real comfort over the years. My daughter-in-law, Jenna, has always commented on the ring when she visits. She'll say things like, it's so timeless, or I'd love to wear something with that kind of history. I thought she was just being nice, but last week she came right out and asked if she could borrow it for a while. I didn't really know how to respond at first. She said wearing it would help her feel closer to the family and honor my husband. I told her I wasn't comfortable with that. The ring is so personal to me. It's not just something you loan out. It's a part of my memories with him. But Jenna didn't seem to understand. She got upset and said she didn't think I trusted her and that I was being selfish for keeping something so meaningful to our family locked away. She even said it would mean more to her to wear it than for me to just keep it in a box. My son didn't really say much at the time, but later I got a text from Jenna. It was long and emotional. She said she was hurt, that I was treating her like an outsider, and that maybe I was too stuck in the past to see how much this would mean to her. She even hinted that I was being controlling, which honestly broke my heart. Now, some other family members are saying I'm overreacting and that it's just a ring, but it doesn't feel that way to me. My husband and I were married for 35 years. That ring has been with me through everything. Good times, bad times, raising our kids. I don't want to sound dramatic, but it feels like a piece of him is still with me. I can't imagine letting it out of my sight. I'm starting to wonder if I'm being unreasonable, though. Jenna seems to think I'm trying to shut her out, and the last thing I want is to cause tension in the family. I don't know if I should apologize or stick to my decision. Aida, update one. I really thought Jenna would let this go after our initial conversation. I was firm but kind about why I wasn't comfortable lending her the ring, so I assumed she'd drop it and move on. That's not what happened. A few days later, Jenna came over to the house while Mark was at work. She said she wanted to talk and clear the air, but honestly, it felt more like she was trying to guilt trip me. She said things like, you know I love Mark so much, and I just wanna feel more connected to your family. And it's not like I'd lose it or damage it. I'm so careful with my things. I told her again that it wasn't about trust or carelessness. It's just that the ring is deeply personal to me. It's one of the few tangible pieces of my husband I have left. And the idea of someone else wearing it makes me uncomfortable. Jenna looked genuinely hurt and said, but you're keeping it locked away like it doesn't matter. What's the point of having something so beautiful if no one gets to appreciate it? I felt my patience start to slip, so I calmly but firmly said, Jenna, this isn't about beauty or appreciation. It's about my memories with my husband. I hope you can understand that. She got quiet for a moment, then asked if she could at least take a photo of the ring to show her friends. I didn't see the harm in that, so I agreed hoping it would make her feel better. She took her phone out, snapped a picture, and left shortly after. I honestly thought that would be the end of it. A few days later, I found out it wasn't. Mark called me, and I could tell right away something was off. He sounded awkward, almost embarrassed. He said, Mom, I don't know how to say this, but Jenna showed me a post she made in one of her online groups, and I think you should see it. He sent me a screenshot and my stomach dropped. Jenna had posted the photo of my husband's ring in some wedding forum and wrote a long caption about how she was trying to honor her late father-in-law by wearing his wedding ring as her something borrowed for her upcoming anniversary celebration with Mark. She said she hoped her mother-in-law, me, would come around and let her borrow it. The comments on the post were brutal. People were calling me selfish and controlling, saying I was gatekeeping family heirlooms and preventing Jenna from feeling included. A few commenters even suggested that Jenna should take the ring without asking and let me get over it later. I was furious, but more than that, I felt betrayed. Jenna had twisted the story to make me look like the villain, and now strangers on the internet were dragging me through the mud. 
When I confronted her about the post, Jenna didn't even try to deny it. She said she was just trying to get advice because she didn't know how to handle the situation. I told her the post was misleading and that it made me look like some cold-hearted monster. Jenna shrugged and said, Well, if you don't want people to think that, maybe you should reconsider letting me borrow the ring. That's when I lost my temper. I told her she had no right to air our private family issues online and that her manipulative behavior was exactly why I didn't trust her with something so important to me. Jenna stormed out, and Mark called me later that evening. He wasn't angry, but he sounded exhausted. He said Jenna felt attacked and didn't understand why I was being so stubborn about the ring. I told him it wasn't about being stubborn. It was about boundaries and respect, neither of which Jenna seemed to understand. Mark sighed and said he didn't want to take sides, but he hoped we could work things out. Things only got worse from there. A few days later, I went to the box where I keep my husband's things to hold the ring, like I sometimes do when I'm missing him. The box was there, but the ring was gone. My heart sank. I searched everywhere, thinking maybe I had moved it and forgotten. But deep down, I knew that wasn't the case. I immediately called Mark and asked if Jenna had been by the house recently. He hesitated before admitting she had stopped by the day before. To apologize and smooth things over. I felt sick. I told Mark the ring was missing and asked if Jenna had taken it. He sounded shocked and said he'd talk to her and get back to me. An hour later, Jenna called me, crying. She admitted she had taken the ring but swore she was planning to give it back. She said she just wanted to borrow it for a little while and didn't think I'd notice it was gone. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I told her to bring the ring back immediately, but she kept saying, I didn't mean any harm. I was just trying to feel closer to the family. I told her it wasn't about harm or intentions. She had crossed a line and I didn't know if I could trust her anymore. Jenna eventually brought the ring back, but the damage was done. I couldn't even look at her when she handed it to me. She looked genuinely remorseful, but all I could think about was how she had violated my trust. Now Mark is caught in the middle, and I feel terrible for putting him in this position, but I don't know what else to do. I've always tried to keep the peace in our family, but this feels like a line I can't just ignore. Some of my relatives think I'm overreacting, but others agree Jenna was way out of line. Jenna has apologized multiple times, and Mark keeps asking me to forgive her and move on. But I'm struggling, and uh, I don't know what's going to happen from here, but one thing is for sure. The ring is staying with me, and I'm taking extra precautions to make sure it's safe from now on. I just wish it didn't have to come to this. Update two. I thought things had reached their peak with Jenna returning the ring, but I was wrong. It wasn't long before she found another way to make this situation even more complicated. After our last confrontation, I assumed she'd back off and leave me alone for a while. Instead, she found a new angle to justify her behavior. Mark called me a few days after Jenna returned the ring. He said she'd been deeply hurt by how I handled the situation and felt like I'd humiliated her by making her bring the ring back. I told Mark I wasn't going to apologize for setting boundaries. He kept trying to explain how Jenna was feeling, but I cut him off and said, Mark, she stole from me. This isn't about feelings. It's about respect. I could tell he didn't know what to say. He asked if I'd be willing to sit down with Jenna to talk things through. Reluctantly, I agreed mostly for his sake. He's my son, and I don't want this issue to drive a wedge between us. When Jenna came over, she started the conversation by apologizing again, but it felt rehearsed. She said she hadn't meant to hurt me and that she was only trying to do something meaningful for her and Mark. I told her I appreciated the apology, but that trust isn't something you can fix with just words. Jenna didn't like hearing that. She said, I don't understand why you're holding on to this so tightly. It's just a ring. It's not like I was going to keep it forever. I tried to explain once again that the ring represents my husband and the life we shared. It's not just a ring to me. Jenna then said something that shocked me. She said, If you care about the family as much as you say you do, why not pass it down? Isn't that what sentimental things are for? That was my breaking point. I told her as calmly as I could that the ring was not hers to claim or use, 
and that it would never belong to anyone else as long as I was alive. Jenna looked stunned, like she couldn't believe I'd just shut her down so directly. She left without another word, and I thought maybe, finally, this would be the end of it. But no. A week later, I got a call from a jeweler in town. They asked if I was the owner of a gold wedding band engraved with my husband's initials. My heart stopped. I confirmed it was mine and asked why they were calling. The jeweler said someone had brought it in to inquire about resizing it. My stomach churned. I immediately knew it was Jenna. I drove straight to the jeweler and asked to see the ring. When they brought it out, I felt like crying. It was definitely my husband's ring. I asked who had brought it in, and they described Jenna perfectly. I explained the situation to the jeweler and thanked them for contacting me instead of making any changes to the ring. When I got home, I called Mark and told him what had happened. He was horrified. He promised to talk to Jenna and get to the bottom of it. A few hours later, he called back and said Jenna admitted to taking the ring to the jeweler, but she claimed she was just curious about how much it would cost to have it resized for herself. That was the last straw for me. I told Mark that Jenna was no longer welcome in my house and that I didn't want to see her until she showed genuine remorse for everything she'd done. Mark begged me to reconsider, saying it would create tension in the family, but I stood firm. I told him I loved him and always would, but I couldn't keep tolerating Jenna's behavior. The fallout from this has been intense. Mark is caught in the middle and I hate that for him, but I can't keep sacrificing my own peace to avoid conflict. Jenna has tried to contact me a few times, but I haven't responded. I'm still deciding how to handle things moving forward, but one thing is clear. The ring is staying with me, no matter what. I've also decided to move it to a safety deposit box at the bank. As much as I hate the idea of not having it in the house, I can't risk Jenna pulling something like this again. It's heartbreaking that it's come to this, but I don't see any other option. Now, some family members are weighing in. My sister thinks I'm overreacting and should try harder to make peace. My niece, on the other hand, thinks Jenna's behavior is creepy and told me I should cut her out of my life completely. I don't know where to draw the line, but I know one thing for sure. Jenna crossed it a long time ago. Update three. I didn't expect things to escalate further, but life has a way of throwing curveballs when you least expect them. After the incident with the jeweler, I thought I'd taken every precaution. The ring was safely in a bank safety deposit box, and I hadn't spoken to Jenna since. Mark and I were still talking, but things were strained. He kept telling me Jenna was sorry and that she wanted to make amends, but I wasn't ready to forgive her. Then, last week, Mark showed up at my house unannounced. He looked nervous, like he didn't know how to start the conversation. After a few minutes of small talk, he said, Mom, there's something you need to know. I braced myself, thinking it was going to be more drama about Jenna, but what he said caught me completely off guard. Apparently, Jenna had been keeping a big secret. She's pregnant. Mark said they found out a few weeks ago, but Jenna didn't want to tell me because she thought I'd be angry. He said she felt guilty about everything that had happened with the ring and was worried this news would just make things worse. I didn't know what to say. Part of me was happy for Mark. He's always wanted to be a dad. But another part of me was furious that Jenna was using this news to try and smooth things over. Mark must have seen the conflict on my face because he quickly added, Jenna really wants to make things right, Mom. She knows she messed up and she wants to move forward as a family. I told Mark I needed time to process everything. After he left, I spent hours thinking about the situation. On one hand, I couldn't ignore Jenna's behavior. She had violated my trust in ways that were hard to forgive. But on the other hand, this was my grandchild. Did I really want to start their life with so much tension in the family? A few days later, Jenna reached out to me directly. She sent a long text apologizing again for everything she'd done. She said she understood why I was upset and didn't expect me to forgive her right away, but she hoped we could work toward rebuilding trust for the sake of the baby. She also admitted something that caught me by surprise. Her obsession with the ring wasn't just about honoring my husband. She said she'd been struggling with feeling like she didn't belong in our family and thought having a piece of our history would help her feel more connected. I didn't respond right away. I needed time to figure out how I felt. Eventually, I decided to meet with Jenna and Mark to talk things through. 
When they came over, Jenna seemed genuinely remorseful. She apologized again, this time face to face, and promised to respect my boundaries moving forward. She also said she'd started therapy to work through some of her issues, which I thought was a positive step. I told her I appreciated the apology, but that rebuilding trust would take time. I also made it clear that the ring was off limits forever. She agreed and said she understood completely. For the first time in weeks, it felt like we were on the same page. Now, I'm cautiously optimistic about the future. Jenna still has a lot to prove, but I'm willing to give her a chance for Mark's sake and for the sake of my future grandchild. The ring is staying in the safety deposit box, and I've made peace with that decision. It's not ideal, but it's the best way to ensure it's safe. This whole situation has been a roller coaster, but I'm hopeful we can move forward as a family. It's not going to be easy, and I'm sure there will be bumps along the way. But for now, I'm choosing to focus on the positives. And there thanks to everyone who shared advice and support throughout this ordeal. It's been a tough few months, but I feel like I'm finally starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel.